Welcome to another episode of Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is I.K. Grande, and if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped to get off. So I wanted to do a quick thank you for everybody that joined us on the live Q&A on YouTube and Instagram. Uh, I plan on doing them every, it was going to be every end of the month, but this month was kind of, well, February is always kind of weird uh, because it only has 28 days. So uh, it ended up being the first of the month. So probably going to keep it that way and just have it be a live Q&A. Uh, every first Monday of the month, but I will give uh, fair warning beforehand. And uh, also, I wanted to do a live intro because my guest this week, when we started talking about uh, doing the podcast, I, I completely forgot to record the intro and the outro because uh, what you are going to hear is kind of like two friends uh, catching up after a long time. Of, of not talking about the industry. So um, I think a lot of you know who he is. You've, you've probably grown up uh, watching his porn. Uh, I know I was a huge fan when he was in Sean Cody. And uh, he went on to work with a whole bunch of uh, big production companies in California and uh, New York. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm talking about Dayton O'Connor. Great guy. And... Yeah, so here we go. Here is the interview with Dayton O'Connor, and I hope you enjoy. Fucking Dayton O'Connor, how are you? I'm great. How are you, buddy? I'm I'm well. I'm not. Good. It's been a long time, huh? Um, five years. Well, two, five. yeah, no, 2015. Um, five years. It's well, definitely five years. How around Halloween? Well, we did uh, purebred and shot at the Eagle. And, uh, yeah, so whatever that was, I think. But then what did I do afterwards? No, no, we did. Um, I came back the following year, and you were parading around as Batman. Remember, for Halloween, we went to a Halloween party somewhere. I, uh, was it? It was probably the Eagle. We or went no, to the, were there we drag went queens? To the Eagle for a little bit, and then we ended up at some place with, like, Twinks and Go-Go Boy. Like, it was more of uh, the other side of... Riches. Riches, probably. Okay. It's probably riches. Yeah. I mean, Twinks, Go Go Boys, riches. So, um, I'm going to be informal with you because I feel like I can be. Yes, absolutely. What's been going on? I'd rather on? just catch up. How has, uh, how has the last five years been? It has been, uh, changing, life changing. I mean, not. Minus everything that has happened all last year. I mean, let's take that out of the equation because everybody felt that. Um, so that four years, you know, um, I kind of dipped out of shooting and I shot some some scenes here and there. But realistically, it was just getting to the grind um, you know, it's work. I put the pedal to the metal. I did have multiple titles during that time. Uh, and afterwards, you know, you have to rest. But you have to take time off, you know. Uh, and that's what kind of what I did. Refocused uh, 9 to 5, work at a warehouse. It's, it's yeah. It, I, it's, it's kind of a, a return to some normality before a reset because there's big things coming or projects happening in the future. So. so before we get to the future, let's talk a little bit about, um, even before I met you, let's talk about, um, well, you shot, you shot for Rafa club when I was with them in 2013. That's when we met, we met in San Francisco in 2014, 2013. Um, but your career started such a long time before that. Yes, MySpace was still around when it's <laughs> MySpace. Yes, this is true. But you started your career, if I'm not mistaken, with Sean Cody. Yeah, they uh, recruited me. What was yeah. what was Sean Cody like? And before, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know if I told you about this. I think I may have been too shy to tell you at the time. You shy? Oh my god, too shy. But I used to watch Sean Cody, and when I met you, I was fucking starstruck, man. I was like, I know him. So when 
when my when Owen Hawk asked me to go out and meet you and Nick Moretti and all these people in San Francisco, I was like, yeah, I'll go. Fine, sure. And uh, luckily, you were a nice guy too. I mean, people think I'm a douchebag, uh, but I only treat people like the way they deserve. You're an amazing person, and I try to treat everybody good. So thank you, because. But um, yeah, uh, it was a different time, man. When uh, when I started for Sean Cody, um, Sean Cody was completely different. It was very Abercrombie and Fitch, double pop collar, guy from Kansas, get him, you know, you hook, line, and sink around. You know, they're straight guys and stuff like that. Uh, my first scene, I think, was with AJ. Uh, big, beautiful guy, built, straight guy, really nice set of teeth. Um, that's what I remember. <laughs> and uh, I mean, like, he had a really nice dick, but it was like, eh. But we had a good time, and Sean Cody encourages you to hang out with people and know the models and what have you. The boy is thirsty. Um, so it's, yeah, it, it, Sean Cody was awesome. They really gave me an opportunity. They're the reason why I live in uh, Southern California. And uh, yeah, I'm really lucky. I got scouted on MySpace, this guy from Seattle. Uh, I believe his name was uh, Art. I don't know if I could say that, but yeah, Art. He uh, was a recruiter. And then it went from, hey, do you want to come take some pictures? Hey, do you want to jerk off? Hey, would you do this? And more money. And then I got a job with them. Over the time I worked with them, I ended up getting a job with them. Uh, they pretty much moved me here. It was awesome. I made some bad choices. Uh, I left the company and then I joined Fab Scout. So Sean Cody was amazing and I'm thankful for Charles and Sean Cody himself. <laughs> it's Oh, he's a person. He's an actual person. It's not like... It, he's a person. Okay. <laughs> you know, so I'm appreciative. The The opportunity was amazing. It moved me from Pennsylvania. I was in college. Um, and I was flying back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I went, I stripped down to college part-time. And I stopped working at a restaurant I was managing, Isaac's, if you get a chance. It's amazing. You might know Isaac's Louis. In PA. Yeah, yeah. Isaac's restaurant. I think there's like four or five. It's around Lancaster, like Mannheim, York, Pennsylvania. They're delicious. Jewish deli, fast, on the go. Bitch, quiz, no gun. Okay. Got competition. I'll definitely give it a shot. You're, okay, so you grew up in Pennsylvania. Yes. Okay, what was growing up in Pennsylvania like? Terrible. Uh, <laughs> it's so small. Uh, I love my hometown. Uh, the My friends that know me uh, uh, and are on my personal uh, Facebooks and stuff like that, uh, which is pretty open. If you know how to sleuth a little, I'm pretty sure you can find it. But, uh, yeah, it's it's small. And there's like 3,000, maybe a, just over 3,000 people. So that's small. And it expands over a very large area because I'm mostly around uh, slate quarries and dirt roads. That's cornfields. Yeah. You know. First so job like, was on out. You were like all American, corn fed. And that's what Sean Cody loved. And that, yeah. They were like, oh, there's this boy. Da, 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 da. No, yeah. Um... I was a little skinnier, too. <laughs> you had that 22, what, 21 year old body. <laughs> manage an Abercrombie um, just before I had. Um, shot Sean Cody so at that time they were all white now all white and condoms and now now they did the good change of switching over and including other races which they should have done from the beginning but they had their niche or niche uh, and then um, yeah uh, it was just now they do bareback too so hey let me ask you a question do you have the TV turned on um, I do, but I'm not watching it because it's... No, can you mute it? 
I can I can hear a little bit in the background. <laughs> can you? Yes. It, I told you, bitch, this microphone. <laughs> it's a really good microphone. There we go. I turned it on. Oh. <laughs> My computer is actually underneath the TV. <laughs> so, well, like it's there's a mirror behind you, so I saw it playing in the background. And then I'm like, what? I was like, is somebody talking? And then I saw that it was a TV in the background. So I figured I'd ask. Um, hey, right. did, so did you grow up? Did you grow up gay in Pennsylvania? Did did people know? Were you out? Were you out? Um, I was not out. Uh, I had multiple girls and stuff like that. Uh, and then, I mean, I had the occasional like homophobic slur thrown at me but they were also by my friends my friends were really gay like they would like play with each other's penises and it was just fun and games ha 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 all the way up to like 17 18 yeah I, like, straight guys are very y'all gay, are gay man circle jerks at camp outs i'm like what are, like y'all are gay <laughs> so yeah it's just i'm like so going there there, it was a lot of homophobic, like self hatred, or you know, if they're going through whatever they are, like discovering who they are. Um, yeah, it was about like them being homophobic and self like projecting, and but nothing ever really crazy. My family's great, they're super supportive. I'm very blessed, um, so I have that on my side. And then for everybody else, it didn't really matter. I don't think because nobody really cared. You know, not, then later on in life, that would take one side or the other, which I don't understand that bullshit. Um, so most of them picked like, I'm from Pennsylvania. Let me, you know, walk backwards into cornfield for you. You said you were going to school and you were coming back and forth doing Sean Cody. Um, were there anybody, were, were, did people find out while you were in school and while you were going back and forth? So I went to art college. Um, Queer, you know, the minute you say art college. like, oh, art college, faggot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody, but I went, the, the school I went to was really intense. It was extremely small. I would do six to eight hour studio classes doing the same thing for eight hours and literally just painting the same thing and it'd be eight hours worth of painting and that was our classes we did very intense we had the max about maybe the max i think was like 25 students in a class which that is extremely uh large and that might have been like if a teacher was out and we had to combine or something but normally it was like 10 to 12 different students in a room drawing the same thing for eight hours. It was super intense. It taught you full-blown technique. But, yeah. So, I think I went off on a tangent. When was it that people started recognizing you or people found out that you were in porn when you would go back home? Uh, no, I told them. That's the thing. I told them. I told them. Yeah, my because my best friend... Uh, my fag hag, uh, my little uh, Romy to my Michelle, she she knew. She knew. I told her everything, and she was very open and loud. And everybody was supportive because what I did, I, I moved into a condo. Well, condo. It was a loft above an art gallery. If it was in San Diego, it would be called a condo. But it was a loft. It was beautiful. It was slate floors, brick everywhere, this orange shag 70s carpet that still looked good, a stair wrought iron staircase that was dual branched, one to a loft, the other to a bedroom. The loft was my bedroom. The bedroom was my dressing room and art studio. It was fucking great. And I gave her a key and I was like, listen, I'm going to be shooting porn and when I'm away, you need to watch this place. Because uh, I paid the landlord my first check. I paid him the whole year rent. It was only like 650 a month. Yeah. So my first check, and Sean Cody paid big back in the day. 
So when I came back after a week of shooting, I had a fat ass check and I just told my landlord, I was like, I'm paying off the entire year. Here's the money. He's like, well, you can't do that. I was like, well, I'm doing it. You either take it now or worry about the future. And he was like, all right, I'll take it. So I lived there forever and it was nice. Well, not really forever. It felt like forever because, ugh, lots of stories. So after after Sean Cody, uh, you went with Fab Scout. Um, what studios were you working with at that time? And where uh, time frame? Where does this put us at? So Sean Cody started. I forget when I started, but that lasted about a year, two years. Maybe like two years, because they put me in a year contract and then I worked for them. So maybe like a year and a half or something like that. And then took time off. Actually, I went to France. I lived in France in between that and then joining Fab Scout. So I was in France for seven and a half months. I lived in Angers. I traveled all over Europe. It was amazing and just left. And then when I came back from San Diego... Uh, or not San Diego, uh, when I came back to San Diego, uh, I just figured I don't, I had broke up with my partner and I was like, I don't know what to do. All right, I'm going to move this way and I could go back to porn. So then I joined Fab Scout and then once I was on, uh, Howard, who's absolutely wonderful and thank you, you big Jewish papa. Um, <laughs> he, uh. Yeah, he was great, uh, and I got to work with everybody. It was awesome. No, it was, I think, I don't remember who the first one was, but I enjoyed working with Chi-Chi and uh, Just for Men, I think it was, Raging Stallion. I did stuff, all their alternative things. I did uh, Raw and Live, I believe it was. It was a live cam show that Chi Chi used to do over at Channel One Releasing. There's just a lot. I've done a lot. I don't, I don't remember it all. You, uh, <laughs> well, that means you had fun. Well, yeah. <laughs> you, your name in Sean Cody was different from what your name is now, Dayton O'Connor. Well, I was Dayton. Okay, you were just Dayton. Okay. Where did they, uh, they didn't really have last names, but I asked them to have a last name, and that's when O'Connor came into play. Okay. Where did you get Where did you get the inspiration for Dayton O'Connor? Because that's a that's a great name. I I literally threw basically like a dart at a map, and it landed in Ohio, and I know Dayton from Ohio, so like, or Dayton Ohio. So I was like, oh well, let me see. So immediately you Google it, Dayton. And see what pops up. And there was nobody in adult film that I found at the time named Dayton. So I was like, all right, well, that's an easy name. All right. So, you know, if you're not, I'm not certain something like Chris Cummings or Cummings in your mouth or whatever the fuck, you know, all those cheesy names, you know, Jason stuck my asshole or. <laughs> so that was the first thing. And then. I don't know if you noticed, but I've been drinking whiskey all night and Irish whiskey. Uh, yes, and O'Connor. Yeah, Dayton O'Connor. Cheers. To Dayton that. O'Connor. Um, even though I'm not even Irish, I'm German and Italian and Native American. So, um, all right. So Dayton O'Connor uh, is released, uh, or or done with Sean Cody. Goes to France, comes back, starts working with Fab Scout and other studios. Um. At what point, because, you know, 2013 and 2007, there's a, a good gap of yeah. of time before you started doing, you know, because there's, there's like, there's, there's low, there's low, like, they take your video, they sell it to whatever that uh, fag rag was, the, the one that you, TLA, mm -hmm. TLA movies, you know, the little porn ones you see. Yeah, so you can shoot for those, and that, but that didn't really count until after when I signed with Fab Scout, and then with like Chi Chi and Colt and Raging Stallion, and then Falcon and Just for Men and Carjackers. I think was 
actually, I just found my scripts the other day because switching, moving, 2021. I found my scripts and uh, cast listings to a bunch of all my old things. Like, if you work for Jet Set Man, uh, you got a script, you know. Like, you got your, your schedule, like, at 2.55 to 4.55, Dayton O'Connor's rimming, blah, 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 at blah, blah, blah. And it was like, we'll take a lunch. Michael Jackson will die. Wolf <laughs> Hudson will be crying in a corner. We'll have to stop production. Literally, that's a story, and it happened. <laughs> I want to hear it. I want to hear it. You don't have to tell me right now, but we can... No, no I'll tell you later, because yeah. you know us. We'll go off on a tangent. <laughs> I do. I'm sure you have one or two books in you. Possibly three. I'm sure. I just need someone to... This is, this is just the beginning. <laughs> I need a stenographer. I'm like, let me just ramble, and you copy everything. So, um, I'm curious because, you know, we've, we, I started my career behind the scenes in a condom laden porn industry, gay porn yeah. industry, where to where every studio I worked with was banned from every award show. OSHA does not approve of your content. Yeah. Yeah. But then 2013, everything starts opening up. True. And then you you made the, the switch to to bareback porn. Well, my first bareback, I do believe, was with Brent Everett. Um, not with him, but for BrentEverett.com. I think that was my first bareback. And because of that, it actually came back to haunt me. Because I left... And uh, no disrespect to, you know, uh, Fab Scout or anything, but I had to leave them and as a model and not be represented because I did bareback porn. And then it was like a year and a half afterwards that everybody accepted barebacking. So I kind of felt like that. I was like, you already support people, you know? So that was a little weird. But the change happened then. Because I was like, well, I got dropped. So then I went to Treasure Island and Raw Fuck Club and uh, all these other. And I did Kink.com, even though Kink is a uh, condom. Uh, but, you know, there's other stuff that they do that you could get into. So, yeah. It was kind of actually the big turnover when I left Fab Scout and it was because of condoms um, and then just after condoms, I was real bitter. I think I tweeted them. The whole, the whole idea of it now, especially now with uh, award shows and stuff. And there was Prop 69, which I still have, I believe, some bracelets. But I couldn't give away because Treasure Island sent me, like, 50,000 of them. And I was like, I, I don't know what to do with seven boxes of this. And each box had, like, 100,000. And I was like, I don't know. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot of pressure. Where am I going to go? <laughs> They're like those little Armstrong, you know what I mean? Little bracelets. I was like, damn it. We're in 2013 right now. Oh, that's right. You are. Look at you. So jealous. I'm in California. This is legal. No, it is. And it's it's legal now. Um, well, it's going to be legal. Well, many places. Well, across the board, they legalized it. Across the board in California, right? Well, no, I believe it wasn't there just a recent um, uh, election. And that was on the bill. It was one of the bills. For certain states. Like Massachusetts just um, last year. Um, and like started, um, what? there was a most recent one that everybody was like, really? Uh, New Jersey. I'm shocked. New Jersey is now legal. We're just waiting for all the paperwork. To Which was the one with the, like, you could smoke crack. You could do this. You could, yeah. the, what state was that? I was like, bitch, y'all, y'all doing crack and Coke and you just heroin is legal, bitch. Coke snorted eight ball, bitch. 
We'll go fucking to a reservoir and fuck film three guys fucking on a rock and eat at a shitty diner. Um, now that I have you on uh, on a tangent here, um, tell me. I want to ask you because you did some. You did some scenes. You did some a lot of memorable scenes in both Condom and uh, Bareback. You worked with Fraternity X as well, right? Yes, yes. What was that experience like? Uh, I was a troublemaker. Oh, yeah? Yes, I, I don't know. First of all, I want to give full-blown props. Uh, Jeremy Hall was awesome on that. He was the one that taking... He was the one directing and, and creating this content and then got taken over, I believe it was Manhunt, uh, then bought that stuff and they were like nope condoms but we were it was i don't know it was like a rotation of like 20 guys but a core five so 15 out of like it was just non-stop they rented out this place uh outside of <coughs> vegas proper and um and uh it was awesome it was they took down mirrors like super eighties mirrors with like etched cityscapes. Yeah. There were like Black Panthers in the living room. Like it was terrible. We moved everything outside, trashed the place, and then they brought in a whole cleaning crew and everything douched it and put everything back. Looked nothing like it. Get out of here. Yeah, and we were there for I think it was like two or three weeks or something. It was a, maybe even a month, honestly, to be honest. It might have been a full fucking month. But it was fucking great. Yeah, my favorite part is the whole get me the wig. I'm going to fucking make you famous and I put the wig on the guy and I fucking railing him from the back and I'm like, you're going to be fucking famous like Britney Spears and I smack him. And it's so fucking good. I got to find that one. I got to find that one. Yes, yes. It just go through it, and I believe we also write on it like "fuck hole" or, or with a marker. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. It is. That scene is lit. That's my favorite scene from Fraternity X. Google it. I'll put a, I'll put a little clip in it too. I'll give them credit, of course. Mm. Of course. You know, just go back into the archives. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Do you remember? Do you remember being on set of Death Drive in two thousand thirteen, Novemberish? Ah, yes. Um, we shot in. Were you at Palm Springs? Palm Springs with Michael Romano and Adam Russo. Right, you were in. Oh my God! Remember, remember that specific incident. Uh, I remember specifically, and we. Which one? Some of, some people may know them as the hamster in the carrot meme. Some may know them as the, the, um, little person with the bigger person in memes. But somebody took, um, a very long time to clean out. So Michael Romano, Adam Russo, and myself were supposed to tag this bottom. Oh, yes. Yes. And... Dick, girl took too long, and we were sitting there waiting, and we're like, we're just going to shoot this in. And it still ended up being a hot scene. We broke the furniture, and then me and Michael were hanging out, and this guy walked up in. Scandal. Scandal. Wait, no, but that was a di- that was later. Remember that? Yeah. That was late. No, that was, that was later, but after the filming of the scene. Because during the filming of the scene... We noticed the neighbor was doing some shady shit, but we were, we're like, "Will it just keep going? Get it done." Wasn't the neighbor just parking his car with his daughter, and they heard you guys having sex? Yeah, and we broke the chair. So I'm fucking uh, Michael Romano, and I'm like pounding his ass out. Adam, I think we're DPing actually, and I can't even think. Yeah, of we're it, DPing, honestly. and it goes. I can't. And we just stop, laugh look at each other, and then we finish the yeah, scene. Yeah, you just keep going. I, I genuinely can't think of louder people to be having sex 
right next to a hedge, right? A privacy. A hedge. A hedge. Well, it was it was private, but the thing. It was not private. It was it was like know. four feet of of entangled, loosely entangled branches. Like you could see their car. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What <laughs> like the, oh, there's a cat outside. Yeah, I, while I'm I don't know him. what. Look at this. You know, and, and Nick Nick shot that. Nick but Miller. it was crazy. It was and crazy. it was it was good. I just I genuinely. You know the what? scene was great. The chemistry, Adam Bruce is yeah. amazing. Yeah. Michael Romano is a great bottom. Is yeah. And then that night, there's just some stranger, a random stranger in the house. It wasn't that night, first of all. It was like, oh yeah, you were in the hot tub. You were shooting the hot tub scene. Oh yeah. Yeah. You were shooting the hot tub scene, and Michael and I are watching porn, just jerking, stroking. Having a good time, fucking taking care of business, and this guy just walks in. Of course, since we're on set, and there's sometimes there's like random people, but this guy came up super casual. Yeah, just weren't you sat talking down. to him too? You were talking to him, I think, about the fire pit or something. No, no, we were stroking, and we're like, oh, we're just hanging out, blah 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 blah, and we didn't mention about the fire pit because you guys didn't want the fire pit on. Because, but then he came and he was telling us how to turn it on, and then he pulls over, he pulls, he he starts talking to Owen Hawk, and he's like, "Who's in charge here? Let me talk to you," and he uh, takes us to the back, and he basically bleeds, bent you over a barrel, yeah, fuck bleeds you, zero Hawk lube, dry. and you're a virgin, and he and you said, "I'll take it, sir. Just leave me alone. I won't tell the I won't tell the cops." You just raped me. Cash. But Took I was cash. great. And I was very thankful for that because it was, it. I, I mean, the kid, what was it? That little Australian boy named Tate. Tate Ryder. Tate. Is that what you just did? Look at, I saw that. I, you know, play I, the tape. I'm not going to. Roll it back. Play, play the tape. tape that, insert I have, look, I've yeah. never, I've said it before in another interview. I've never met a more toxic individual in my life. And I'll, I'll. Really? Absolutely. That's a story over cocktails when you well, come to San no, Diego. No, actually, no. After we, we quarantine. Spoke, I remember, I remember speaking to you um, a little bit about that too. I mean, it was just. You know, it was his vehicle, let's say, right? Like, we were, he was the main star, but he was so awful to be around. Um, and then afterwards, like... You, you, honey, you gave her her close-up? Boy, may I have a cocktail? <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to ask my boy for a cocktail. Thank you, boy. Pop in here, say hi. Come here. Hello. Hi. No... Down. Who's this? Introduce oh. is down. Oh. <laughs> That's not PG. He's in New Jersey. They don't allow that stuff. <laughs> Too funny. Uh, yeah, so okay, so you remember. You remember that. Okay. That was uh that was crazy. That was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. It was a great I loved it. And all everybody was awesome. The crew. Everybody was amazing. Then from there, I know you, you did a couple of Treasure Island shoots. When exactly did... A couple. When, I know, but when exactly did you carve T-I-M? Oh, Freddie Mercury. Okay, when exactly The Freddie Mercury that? boy. Because that yeah. was a big... He looked like Freddie Mercury. Did you see comments about that shit? Like, people were... Well, I mean, Treasure Island's known for doing crazy shit like that. But then, you know, Treasure Island and Dayton O'Connor. You can't, <laughs> you can't really, yeah. Okay, so what did you do? What happened? So, so there's this whole thing. So, um, part of who I am in my personal life, I'm a part of the leather community, uh, multiple other time holder. But one of the fetishes and the things that I I got into is ritualistic bloodletting. So that is something, you know, the people that hang people, you know, from hooks, they're also probably into maybe bloodletting and stuff like that because there is blood from the pulling of the skin. So um, I had learned how to be safe and clean and not to shatter the mirror, but the, the movie looks dirty, but it was safe and clean. Like we 
we took care of things. I told them. They asked me if I would be interested. I was like, I do know how to do this. I can do bloodletting. And the knife that they use is like a raptor claw. So it was very easy. Just And it, it's very sharp. So all, you, all I did was just... It's no different than you taking another knife. Oh, I left all my knives at work. Because I have to... But I can show you. Uh, but it's no different than just just a light scrape. And it breaks just enough of the epidermis and it releases. So it's not broken like a gash. It's more of just like it kind of just just does enough. And so it lets out. Um, his, what we did is, um, it. I mean, he was a bleeder. He had thin blood, <laughs> to be honest, because it dripped. But it took a while. It took a while. And I beat his chest and then I, you know, beat his ass. And then he drinks the piss out of the bucket because they didn't want me to piss in the toilet. And I was like, oh, this is where we're going downhill, guys. <laughs> like, cutting was okay. I could I could justify that. But now, biobacteria, yeah. bitch. But the guy was super hot. He looked like Freddie Mercury. In my opinion. In my honest opinion. He looked very Freddie Mercury, the movie. But, okay. you know, sucking dicks without the falsies. <laughs> I assume you do know, like, a lot of the criticism and shit that came from that. Did you, did you nope. hear that or no? Nope. nope. Oh, okay. All right. Well, that's good. Nope. Good for you. I didn't tune in. Um, I do know that there were comments and how bad it was and blah, 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 blah. I do not know what people said. Maybe that's why some people say that, like, oh, Dayton stopped and doing porn because of that scene. Um, no, I just... I'm sorry. Like, I did stuff and I actually know that. If you were a company, I would expect, a, you know, just ask me. And I'll tell you, be like, oh, yes, well, I'm in the leather community. I go to these events. I'm very aware of ritualistic bloodletting. Everything was safe and sane. You know, editing is magic, honey. <laughs> like, but whatever. But it led me also to other good things, like the thousand loads where we turkey basted and Max Cameron fucking swallowed all the loads out of Blue Bailey's asshole. Fucking amazing. That was great. Yeah. Fucking great. Um, One of the best orgies ever. By the way, what about um? So, so you're saying bloodletting? You've you've gotten into, or you didn't have that? That's a fetish in the leather comedian and stuff. But you also were into pup play. Are you still? Well, um, I used to host a puppy night every first Wednesday of the month at the San Diego Eagle, um, and still plan to when um, I guess they allow us, you know. <laughs> It's kind of hard right now. Everything going on. Every, hopefully, everybody does their part. And, you know, contributes to the normality that we need, and uh, it'll return. It'll be different. I'm gonna turn it over. I have different people in mind. Um, definitely working with the same organizations, San Diego Pups and Handlers, and stuff like that. So, but yeah, I will always. I'm like the vulture. I'm like, do not. I know you're dead, but do not. <laughs> I'll make sure that Puppy Night is always going to be at the San Diego Eagle. And it'll be the first Wednesday of the month. Also, you know, another thing I do want to... I'm not, I'm not trying to soften you up here, but... When I went to San Diego and we worked on your film, uh, Purebred... You were involved, and I think continue to be involved in fundraising for families i think single single parent families with uh so so i'm part of the imperial court it's uh the largest and eldest uh lgbtq charitable organization in the u.s also internationally we have canada and in mexico 72 in the u.s 72 different chapters and um we raise money for low-income families, people living with HIV and AIDS. We work a lot with battered women and uh, children families. 
Uh, we raised money. Uh, last night, my boy and I uh, went and handed out blankets. And we saw other people doing the same. Like four other groups of people walking and handing out blankets to the homeless and stuff. Because San Diego is always beautiful. But right now, it's kind of cold. And it's like a, a cold, a wet cold. You know what I mean? So, we hang out and get blankets. But, yeah, that's honestly what I did last night. So, <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, the Imperial Court, anybody could look on, honestly, anywhere. Um, wherever you're located, just look for an Imperial Court uh, LGBT organization in your area. And you're, you go to... Uh, the ICC.com, which is the Imperial Court Council. And you can find it anywhere. Like, we're all over. And we, right now we have uh, Take What You Need Tuesdays, where no questions, no quals, no quarrels. Just walk in, sanitize, wear a mask, and then um, take what you need. You There's a walk-through, food bank. We don't need paperwork. We don't... No. It's just about uh, helping people currently. And they need it. So, Tony. You can have all of these fetishes and kinks and you could work in anything and still be so fucking charitable, right? Like, you still have a heart. It doesn't doesn't matter. I came from nothing, man. Um, I, I really... I don't have anything to give except for who I am as a person and my art and my creativity. Um, and, and I, I certainly didn't come from anything. Uh, my family did their best and we strived and they made me a harder person and they're amazing and wonderful. So what else are you going to do? <laughs> you have to, if you, if you know that feeling of not having, then you need to be able to, to give because you, you've been there. And that's, and I just think about that. I told my partner, or my boy, sorry. uh, I told him, you know, it makes me feel good only because that could have been me at any point when I came to California. I've been very lucky. Um, It was me because my family had been through some shit. And I lived in a car, so, but I had a car, you know. So we bought blankets, and then we saw people, and they were like, oh, we have blankets too. And then they, we stopped, and they told us who they get blankets to. And I was like, oh, awesome. So this way we didn't over-blanket, although I don't think over-blanketing right now in Southern California is a thing, because a lot of elderly, we have a sock drive and a blanket drive. You could also donate Imperial Corps. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I could go on forever for about that shit. What else you got? Um, I want to know what you think of, uh, these sites, only fans and just for fans. I want to know what you think of clips and the people coming up now and yeah. Well, I mean, what do you, well, what do you mean? Like... Well, I no, I I I say this. I've said this in a couple of different podcasts, but it was kind of coming. I think studios, depending on where you were, who they were, definitely had it coming in a way that they kind of were the if and all when it came to a model's career, right? So you you make the model disappear, but the fans don't disappear. I mean, look at. Let's be honest, okay. Um... They, at at a time, studios had the power. The model that was the model, that got paid the highest, that got viewed the most, that got the, 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 uh, grabby, that got the Cyber Socket Award, you know, the people that got those are what the studio said, this is the hot guy. This is the hot guy. We're at a time point where Models have control. They can say, oh, this is me, and I will film content. And the 
fans, people, you know, society, they will make whoever is popular. I mean, that is what it is. But at a point, there was. The, only studios could. Because you, the internet wasn't that way. There wasn't this. There wasn't uh, just for fans or only fans or, I don't know, fuckmeandmass.com or whatever else people are doing. I don't know. Although, hey, Dayton O'Connor, just for fans, coming soon. Do I have... Do you can search it, and I have one video up, and that's all you get for now. <laughs> so you are you are going to be, or you you, I, I can swear I saw a just an OnlyFans or a Just for Fans video. I it's an OnlyFans. Okay, it's it's an OnlyFans. I believe. Okay. I don't know. I don't do this. Actually, I'm trying. I don't know. It took me forever to set up this Zoom. I love it. <laughs> I do miss hanging out with you. I, you I do too. I, I had are a wonderful person, and we had some damn good times in San Diego at Moe's. I'm not gonna lie; it's not every day you can meet somebody. I told here. you what, what. I'm pretty sure, and you could can remember when you tried to pee in my mouth. <laughs> well, yeah. I wish I could. Words are hard. Shut up. Look. Look at it. Read it, bitch. <laughs> Okay. Do you? Oh, you know Never what? been more appropriate. Here, I'll do it like Star Wars. Do 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 uh, which reads, if I want your opinion, I will take my dick out of your mouth. Uh, so that's what you guys missed if you didn't watch it on YouTube. Uh, and yeah, I just want to once again remind you that uh, we are available on every podcast directory so you can listen to us anywhere. And we are available on YouTube. And if you are watching on YouTube, please click the subscribe button, click the like button, click the notifications button, all that fun stuff. And that way you'll know when we update, which is every Friday while we're in season. And uh, once again, remind you, this is Demystifying Gay Porn. Thank you very much for listening. My name is IK Grande. And if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped you get off. Cheers.